can, if we can open our Romans chapter 5. I'd like to look at a topic that's probably not the most popular, especially among the world's churches. Or, right. But Romans chapter 5, verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about death this morning. Mm -hmm. I know mankind doesn't like to think about it too much, but even in the Old Testament we're told to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Amen. But there are three types of death in the scriptures. I hope we can look at and understand these three better. There's physical death that we're all, I think, acquainted with. There's, mm -hmm. there's spiritual death, and then there's what you might refer to as eternal death, or the second death. Mm -hmm. And each of these are really the, are the result of sin, but they bad. We, we talk a lot about physical death, but we don't talk a lot about the other two. The world spends countless time, money, and energy trying to put off physical death. Mm -hmm. And they fail to realize that they are spiritually dead. Right. And without yeah. the intervention of Christ, they will be eternally dead. But here, Paul goes, says that by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so that death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. You know, this is referring to Adam, we'll turn back there in a moment, but sin came in the world through Adam, and then it says death came because of sin. Mm -hmm. so my opinion based off these scriptures and others is that there was no death of any kind before sin. Right. I don't even think a little ant was stepped on accidentally. Right. You can't convince me that there are a million years of evolution and death before we got to humankind. You're right. So death came about by sin. All three types came about both spiritual, physical, and eternal death are all the result of sin. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2 and see where this all began. Genesis 2 and verse 16 and 17 here is where Adam is given the command not ye of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It says, verse 16, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Amen. If we can go over, we don't have to read the First 19 verses of chapter 3 tell the account of the serpent beguiling Eve and her taking and giving Adam and him willfully eating. Right. <coughs> you know, they, the serpent said to her, You shall not surely die. Right. But they did die that day. They didn't, physically, they didn't drop dead, but spiritually, they died. And then physically, they began to die. And so it has been the course of sin ever since that the man is born spiritually dead and that he, from the day he is born, he already is headed towards death physically. Mm -hmm. And that, as mentioned, without the intervention of Christ, uh, that eternal death that we'll get to, that's where sin always leads. James 1, 15 tells us that lost when has conceived brings forth sin, and sin when it's finished brings forth death. That's always the end of sin, is death. All, said all three types of death. So ultimately sin will destroy this body, but spiritually it already destroyed the soul. Amen. And apart from some work of God, it will eternally destroy both body and soul. Right. Well, besides the fact that it just leads to death, I'm sure Brother Larry and Don have seen it when they're 
healthcare does a lot of studies where you see correlations between two things. And engineering, we would see is such a thing, but there's not just a correlation between sin and death. There's a cause and effect there. Hey, Amen. Really, death is the direct result of sin. Is what is deserved because of sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> when sin earns death, if you will, and some may say, well, I, I don't have any sin. Well, you're deceiving yourself. Romans 3.23 tells us that all of sin, all of sin to come for the glory of God. Amen. Solomon in Ecclesiastes seven twenty he tells us there is not just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So there's no one that has not sinned or really that does not sin presently. Mm -hmm. John in First John tells us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Amen. It says the thing it even goes as far as say we make him a liar. Mm -hmm. So in this body we have sin, and really we're not going to escape that in this lifetime. You're right. But all of sin, all of deserving of this death, really all of us were born into this death, if you will. We don't have to turn there either, but Ezekiel 18, 20 tells us the soul that sinneth it shall die. Mm -hmm. That's that spiritual that we're talking about. That Amen. Mm -hmm. the, the soul, if it sins, it's going to die. It says that's, mm -hmm. once again, what it deserves, what it leads to. Ephesians 2 1 tells us that we were dead in trespasses and sins. It's because of sin we were dead. Now, I know physically we weren't dead. I mean, every last one of us here has, has life, and I don't think any of us have been resurrected from the dead so but spiritually we were dead spiritually we had to be given a new life mm -hmm. because our soul was sinful that's why I believe that the inner man the soul if you will when it's been created new in Christ it doesn't sin anymore amen if it did it would need to die once again so that which is born of God doesn't sin First John teaches us The spiritual death plagues all that have been born of Adam. Any that have came about since him have come through the lineage of Adam, which is all that have walked this earth besides Christ. Amen. All were born in this spiritual dead state, needing to be born again. Mm -hmm. That's why Christ said you must be born again. Mm -hmm. Then we have physical death, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, 27 says, And as it is appointed when the man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. Amen. Death is a, a universal truth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Unless the Lord takes us out of here by a second coming, then death is sure. Right. Amen. The only two I know of in the scriptures that didn't die were Enoch, because he so pleased God that God translated him, and Elijah because God caught him up in the world. Man. Amen. So unless you can live in such a way as they did, then you can expect death to be your way. And I don't think any of us are can hold a light to Enoch or Elijah. Yet it's pointed that a man wants to die. He says, mm -hmm. "I said men spend countless energy and money and." time trying to put off death and even now I think they were trying to avoid it if they can but sure man cannot avoid death it's they what sin will bring about it in time but because of the curse of sin upon this world there's none there will escape death mm -hmm. for us that are alive and remain to come to the Lord we can count ourselves <coughs> extra blessed for 
Since we don't just be set to change. Amen. But barring that, you can be sure death is coming. Whether it's at a young age or an old age, we ought to always be prepared to face death. Mm -hmm. So man likes to not think about it, they like to not talk about it. They don't, they don't want to think death is coming, but I'm sure every last one of us have experienced someone dying that we loved or we were friends with. Mm -hmm. well, I probably had more than my fair share in my lifetime. All my, my dad, my, all my grandparents, great grandparents that were living, uh, that friends I went to high school with. They, mm -hmm. I think of one person in particular, he was a pretty good kid. I, mean, he, I never got to talk about the Lord, but I knew him growing up. And I think he might have been a saved person. He headed out with a couple of his buddies and they got about a half mile down from his house, hit someone else head on. Mm. And all three of them went out to eternity that day. Mm. Seniors in high school. So I'm sure none of them expected to die at such a young age. We have others such as, I think of my great grandmother, she lives up in about 95 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, death still came, didn't it? Right. We ought to always be prepared to leave this place, whether it's by whether you think we're going to go out by the rapture, whether you think we're going out by death, you can be sure it's one of the two are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's go back over to John chapter 8 for a moment. And Christ speaks upon death here in this, these passages. In verse 24, he says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Amen. Well, that's the key. You believe that he is the Christ. Mm -hmm. That whosoever believeth on the Son of God shall have eternal life. So to believe not, he says, you shall die in your sins. And that is... A miserable way to die is to die in your sins. Mm -hmm. well, that's what leads to that eternal death that we'll get to. And if you go on down to verse 51, <coughs> he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Amen. Now, he's obviously not talking about physical death here. If that's the case. All the apostles and all the Christians that go on before us have in trouble, aren't they? Right. No spiritually, we will never see death if we follow Christ. But to die in your sins is to eternally die spiritually. Mm -hmm. But we'll be careful not to die in your sins. Mm -hmm. We go over to chapter 11. And we <clears throat> speaking to his disciples about Lazarus. Notice he, he works things a little different. We see this pattern throughout all the scriptures. John 11, verse 11. says, These things said he, speaking of Christ, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. We know Lazarus had physically died, but Christ described it as asleep. The disciples didn't understand. Verse 12, we see it says, Then said his disciples, Lord, if you sleep, you shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. I think, well, if he's sleeping, and he's doing well. He's, he's resting, he's going to get over this sickness. Well, we have to put it plainly to him in verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them, plainly, Lazarus is dead. Right. The death for the child of God is not the same as death for the unsaved. Amen. It's described as sleeping in several passages of scriptures, but it's only a temporary thing. As it was for Lazarus here, so it will be for all the saved. Death will not be a permanent place. Amen. 
We can turn over to First Thessalonians. I'm sure we all know this passage, but it's always an encouraging one to read. First Thessalonians chapter four. Beginning in verse 13 through the end of the chapter, it says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Amen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Here, here Paul describes them as sleeping, that. This isn't soul sleep, as some would teach. Right. Mm -hmm. But they are. The death that has taken them is not a permanent one. It says here, Jesus, or those which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. Verse 15 goes on to say, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Amen. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Oh, to be dead in Christ is really nothing more than taking a long nap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll be raised again at the last day. Mm -hmm. If you remember, that's what Martha thought that Jesus was talking about. He said he would raise Lazarus again. No, death cannot hold us that have been born again. Mm -hmm. it really, it has no power over us because it has no power over Christ. Like Romans tells us that he died, but now death has no more dominion over him. Mm -hmm. But in him, it has no more dominion over us either. Let's go over to Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> I know this chapter describes the struggle between the inward man in the flesh, the new man, the old man, if you will, the struggle of sin in the life of a believer. <coughs> and he would do good, he would find evil present with him. He does that which he would not do, and doesn't do that which he would do. And he comes down to the end of this in verse 24, and he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this dead? Mm -hmm. Because I thank God for Jesus Christ our Lord. In this body, it's been described as like carrying a dead corpse around. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the inward man, he strives to live for God. But we're always struggling about with this old, spiritually dead nature that's still within us. What we often refer to as the flesh. Mm -hmm. But oh, one day we'll be delivered from that in the person of Christ. Amen. We read about that in there in First Thessalonians. That's the day that ultimately we'll be delivered from it. We'll go over to First Corinthians 15. We can read a little more on it. First Corinthians 15, and verse 26. Here, speak, speaking of the reign of Christ and. We'll get to read verse 25. It says, For he must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. Amen. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm hmm. And we'll go on down. Verse 51 through 57 describes the catching away. You can read those in a moment. The, the Obelianists will have you to believe that Christ is currently in a reigning and this is when death is destroyed. But it's not when it's destroyed, it's when it's defeated for us, but it hasn't been destroyed yet. Very bad. Verse 51 through 57 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised and incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Mm -hmm. This corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. 
So when this corruptible shall put on it, incorruption, this moral shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in the victory. Amen. So death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here death will be defeated for us. No more have to face it in any three of the forms anymore. Mm -hmm. It will be incorruptible, immoral, or <laughs> immortal, I mean, <clears throat> no more bound by the chains of sin, no more aging and dying in the flesh. Amen. But if you follow me for a moment, death will not be destroyed yet completely at this point. For Christ will reign for a thousand years, and then he will finally destroy all the enemies when Satan is loose for a season. And then at that, that judgment we talked about, that's when death will be destroyed. Amen. He said, first point unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. You can be sure all of us will stand before God, whether you believe there's one judgment for all, or two judgments, or I'm sure there's people that believe there's three or four, 1,600 judgments, I don't know. Right. I come across some pretty crazy theories. <laughs> but you can be sure we will stand before God and give an account for the deeds done in our body. Amen. But we won't stand condemned because we have Christ as our advocate. Because already there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. But with the unsaved, now they will stand condemned. Let's turn over to Revelation 20. On this thought of death, I learned something I didn't know. That the Mormons, they believe that John the Apostle is still alive and preaching today. Lord help us. This, <clears throat> I think, you don't have to turn there, but I'll read this for us. So we're at the end of the book of, at the end of, the book of John. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can find it for us. It's Luke. <coughs> In another place it says that there would be so many evil standing here that will not taste of death until they see the kingdom of right. God coming. I, mean, I think that's where they get that idea from. But at the end of the Gospel of John, chapter 21, in verse number 20, it says, Then Peter turned about, see the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Yes. We know that was John that leaned on Jesus' breast. And Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? And Peter was, for some reason, worried about what John was going to do. Verse 22 says, Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Mm -hmm. Well, he said, Well, if I just have him hang around till I come back, what does it matter to you, Peter? Right. And he just tells me, he says, Peter, just follow. You worry about following me. Right. So they take that, I guess, and say that well, John Baptist, or John the Apostle is still alive. But the next verse says, Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he, he shall not die, but if he will tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Right. Jesus didn't say he wasn't going to die. He was just using an illustration. Amen. Yet, apparently that was purported even all the way back in that time. I'm pretty sure John is already worshiping at the feet of Christ now. But Amen. I don't know everything, so I could be wrong, I guess, but I don't think he's been hanging around for the last 2,000 years. Right. <clears throat> Revelation 20, verses 14 through 15, tell us the previous verses here tell us that there was a great white throne and the dead stood before it and were judged out of the, the books. And it says, And death and hell, verse 14, were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Mm hmm. That is when death is destroyed. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. 
Here is that eternal death that we talked about. Mm -hmm. They're cast alive in the lake of fire. They spend all of eternity there. <coughs> As verse 10 of the same chapter tells us, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, mm -hmm. and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So it is for all that are cast in that lake of fire. They'll be tormented there day and night forever and ever. Amen. That is this eternal death. Go to verse 8 of chapter 21. It says, But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and tormentors, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So all these wicked ones here, all these mm -hmm. unsaved ones, as it says in verse 15, all who were not found written in the land of the bush of life. Right. They shall taste that eternal death, that second death as it's called here. Amen. That is what lasts for all of eternity. That's to die in your sins will lead to that. And that is the really the just reward for sin. Mm -hmm. But what did the rest of Romans six twenty three tell us? The gift of God and eternal life for Jesus Christ, our Lord. The sin deserves this not just physical death, not just spiritual death, but this eternal death. Mm -hmm. Yet God was so gracious to give us eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, if you don't believe on him, you shall die in your sins, he said. Yeah. Oh, well, if you believe on him, he said you shall have eternal life. Mm -hmm. He said you shall never die. Oh, what a miserable state it would be for those that spend eternity in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. In another scripture, it's called the place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is it's worse than the current hell that we know about. Mm -hmm. Where that place, rich man was able to converse and say that he was tormented in this flame. But in that place, there's eternal darkness, eternal suffering. Mm -hmm. Such that it says that they'll be weeping and wailing, not desiring it. Surely they'll desire a drink of water, but they won't even be able to express that, I don't think. Right. And that is the end result of sin. So I know we think of the spiritual and even the physical death, but ultimately that is the death that sin leads to. Mm -hmm. And that is a dreadful thing. Oh, how that Christ delivers even from that. Not only does he deliver us from hell and from the lake of fire, but really delivers us from the root cause of that, which is sin. Mm -hmm. And that is what we ought to desire to be delivered from. That is what Paul desired to be delivered from in Romans 7. That indwelling sin that was he always struggled with. Mm -hmm. So how we ought to be very thankful for the gift of God. We ought to ever be telling others about our Lord Jesus Christ. All these false religions have their way out of hell, but yet to be saved by the grace of God is the only way to truly be delivered from sin and ultimately from sin. Amen. We shouldn't we shouldn't preach what I know Brother Larry is referred to as a, a fire escape theology, just a simple fear of hell. I'm sure most don't want to go there if, you, if they're honest. No, we need to be delivered from sin, for sin is a, what takes one there. Amen. Well, but this death is what we, we ought to be prepared for death. If you don't know Christ the Savior, then you're certainly not prepared for death. Right. You might have all, your will all lined up, you might have your funeral garments picked out and your casket and plot and all that but if you don't know Christ as Savior all those things are going to matter very little that's right you know, to die in your sins is the worst way to die amen mm -hmm. I certainly wouldn't want to die a, a cruel death or a slow painful one but 
to die in your sins is to die for all of eternity. Which is far worse than anything that this right. this life can give us. Right. You could suffer the cancer for years and years, and yet that's not compared to this eternal death that we read about. You could die the most cruel and gruesome death you can think of, and yet none of that will compare to this eternity in the lake of fire. Amen. Well, thanks be to God for Jesus Christ our Lord who gives us the victory. But but woe on you if you don't know him as Savior. Amen. Like I said, I know death is not a popular topic among the world. They don't like to think of dying. They like to think that they can live forever. But you know, death is sure for any that have been born of the Adam's race. Mm -hmm. Even for the good people and even for the most wicked people. For the young and for the old, death is sure thing that's coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's not think of it too lightly. Let's close with that one. Amen.